Jesus is so wonderful. He's so wonderful. You know, when, <clears throat> one of the ways that we hear God is, is by that presence. And you know, when the presence manifests itself, there is a mystery in that presence. And did you hear that in the song? It said, thine own dear presence to cheer and to what? Guide. So there's a guidance in that presence. So what you do when that presence comes like that. Now, you are the faith people that say that you don't feel. I'm going to tell you something right now. You cannot tell me that because most of my guidance by the Holy Spirit comes from thine own dear presence. And I, everybody say this word after me, feel. I, I feel him. And if my husband's here right now, he would go, what? Where? Because he is a knower. He hears God by, he just knows. When he says to me, I know that is the voice of the Lord. He doesn't necessarily have a vision or he doesn't feel. He doesn't necessarily hear a voice. But when he says, I know, you better believe and that person that's that kind of knower like that, man, they have the power to overcome. They just like, they'll just like put your foot on the accelerator and barrel on through. Doesn't matter what comes. But his wife <laughs> is a feeler. And thine own dear presence is in this room, same as last night, manifesting in a different way in a whole different way, but it's the glory. It's the glory of him. Hallelujah. And so right now with that presence, I don't, I don't move till I get something from the mystery of it that tells me. So what we're going to do is right now is we're just going to follow that and we're going to bow our heart before the Lord and we're going to press into that. We're going to press into that. We're going to become aware of it. Yeah, I know, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Just the enjoyment of it. Thine own dear presence. Nothing cheers like that. In the book of Luke, Jesus was there with the Pharisees, and they were, they were choosing seats of honor, and they were seating people in these places. And Jesus turned to them, and he said, well, I'll tell you how I choose seats. I always leave one open. I leave this one seat open. When the guest comes, he is exalted into the highest place. And then, therefore, I am exalted. So when that presence comes, we do just like Jesus. We leave everything open. And then when he says move, we move. 
We, it's the way that we honor the Holy Spirit, and even in our praying. Sometimes when I'm praying, it's not just all like a machine gun where you're praying in tongues. And sometimes it is, but sometimes it's just like this. And we just honor his presence amongst us. And you allow that presence to come down on you and just saturate you. I remember I had a situation in ministry, a, a great praying lady, and I knew there was something, I knew there was something wrong. Uh, I don't know how I knew that, but I was a knowing. And uh, this one day she said, can I talk to you? And I said, yes. So we went to a prayer area in the church, and she I'm waiting, telling stories while I'm waiting on this. You understand that? Um, she began to tell me the story of her life. And it was so vile and so sickening. I could hardly listen to her. And the more, and then she began to cry, and I cried. So I'm not helping her at all. I'm crying, she's crying, I'm just weeping. I almost want to get on the floor and put my head down. It's so horrible. And I'm like, to the Lord, how is she ever going to come out of this? And what if I'm like her right now, how could I ever help her? You know what the Lord said to me? So I'm like, what am I supposed to do with? He said, get her to the throne. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, okay, how do I do that even? Get her to the throne. So I don't even know what I did. I don't even know what happened. I know the presence of God came in that room. And do you know that that lady, she was so delivered that she could not remember her past. No, don't clap it away, Dawn. No, no. Just lift your hands. She was so completely delivered. And there, I did nothing. I don't know that I did anything. Yeah. Yeah. The presence. The presence. But that presence. So if you're in this room right now, whatever has it tried to hit you, come your way. Whatever mountain, whatever valley, whatever intrusion of demon or enemy powers, if you just lift your hands right now, nobody has to lay hands on you or touch you. We just yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost. And we receive that presence. And actually Jesus lays his hand upon us. And he touches us and there's no touch like his touch. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord, I'm trying to get over to that, but you just have to Wait just a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see a paranation. In sat loklomba, in a sai to shete at a flabado. For I want you to know this realm and get very familiar with it. Because there will be times right before the battle comes that the spirit will come upon you in a stillness and in a mashokolo, a majestic presence. And the spirit will lift you into a higher realm so that you are not battling that in your flesh or trying to get through on your own. But because 
of that presence. It will be like a river, and that presence will carry you through, and it shall be the easiest thing that you have ever known. And right in that river as you go, there will be signposts all along the way, and he will show. He will show you of the things that are in your path to come. And some of those that would be with you to help take you through in your future. There's so much along these lines of my presence that the body does not understand. what it does, how it helps, how it ministers to your mind and your heart and your soul to make you stalwart and mighty and majestic in the day of battle where you had walked as a sergeant before. Now you could be a commander of armies just by the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing this quietly without drums, music. Arise and shine, for my light has come. Bum, 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 bum. Arise and shine, for my light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen. The glory of the Lord has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon me. Sing that again. Arise and shine. This is about your identification. The light has come. Arise and shine. For the light has come. Glory of the Lord is risen. The glory of the Lord has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon me. One more time. I arise and shine for my light has come. That would be Jesus. Rise and shine, for my light has come, and the glory of my Lord has risen, the glory of my Lord has come, the glory beautiful. What a beautiful. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord, you take me over there to it, and I will hang him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sukumari anavase. Yep. In Sionara Kiafrai. I had to see an amata. Ariatus Numakea Yamantasale Yamanata. 
Ilian Masoya, she humanata Kadavaya Tosta. Yeah, I've been waiting a long time to deal with this. And it's not, it's not, it's an amazing thing that the Lord, I should have known he would do it here. Yes, Lord. I know that you have readied your army for this one. And we just might get another one right after this one. Now, see, I'm just coming up on this. I'm coming up on something. I might get to tell you, and I might not. I may show you my tissues as old as a beta, so so you buy it. And psych, and psych, and psych, and psych. I have him in my sights. And an I could all, and I see exactly where you are at this very moment. But in my spirit, I see you. And to come, a shoot on Monday, and the dobe, a dogo laba. Everybody in this room say, Sulamani. Kasam Sulamani. We are, at this moment, by that presence, we are over onto the border of Iraq. And we are dealing with a man by the name of Kusam Suleimani. He is head of the Revolutionary Guard. And he has gotten in there, and he is going to try and bring the Kurds over to the Iranian side. We're going to stop him now. Alakamba, Osola, Anamanto. You're ready, you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. You don't know you're ready, but you're ready. I'm an uncle. I'm an uncle. I'm some older. I'm the Kalu. I'm so called about her. I'm the motor. Go. I lose your dog. Go. I'm the motor. 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 Gathering you and the Matoka 
and a muscle liberator. And you found spirit of deception in the name of Jesus. You found spirit deceiving nations of people. We come in you in the name of Jesus right now. Stop now. You stop. You stop now. You should turn back in Jesus' name. I call for the forces, the forces of light to go in, to go in, and take them out, take them out now. We call for the assassination of the wicked, and the power of you know, Lord, you know. In Jesus' you, name, Lord. in Jesus' name, we lift up the pen. Yes, oh, now we Jesus. praise you. We praise you, Lord. We Thank praise God. you, Lord. Hallelujah. And Debosa. So right now, Father, that presence has put us on alert. If there's anything else that you would like us to take care of in this next hour or so, you just tell us about it. And we will, you just show us or you cause your presence to come, or you let there be a knowing, or we can hear. We can with our ears hear, or with our eyes we can see, and Father, we'll just take care of that for you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Do you have something? Yeah, I thought you did. It, it has to do with Kurdistan. It with is what? Kurdistan. Kurdistan, the Kurds, the Kurds in their nation. And I just heard while we were praying that it's separate in God's eyes. And it will know a different judgment. And he doesn't want that to be changed and to be swept up. What God has joined, let if no man... If you stand up now, stand up. What Give God that. has joined, let no man put asunder. But what God has separated, let no man try to join. And I, I just got that when I was seated here. That it's separate in God's eyes. We draw the border. With the bloodline. We draw the border. Oh, there you go. We draw with the bloodline. We draw the border. We draw the border with the bloodline. With the bloodline. Yes. Ilibrasote. Ilibrasote. And with the glory of God. And with the glory. It knows that we're in the time of the judgment of the nations and separate in God's eyes. Praise God. In demonstration... The Lord just came and showed you how to translate the judgment into a mercy. He gave you the demonstration. I, I'm speaking here to this young man in the front. You, do you want to stand or sit or? So in demonstration, you said, how? You said, Lord, how am I, how, how am I going to do that? You're, you're in the midst of it. And so how God has trained you in mercy, you're going to see, oh, in a whole different light, the whole different light, how to function and take care of it. And it's as simple as that. Praise the Lord. He knows what I'm talking about. If you didn't, it probably didn't make sense to anybody, but he, James knows what I'm talking about here. All right. Jesus. All right. Then I think that we'll talk about surveillance. Surveillance? Is that what you said? Yes. 
surveillance? Is that good? It's good. <laughs> surveillance. Um, because... <coughs> I'm going to go down there so I can hear you better. All right. Let's see what, what scripture I can use. You know, we word of faith people, we always have to have the scripture. Uh, it will use Isaiah 119 where it says, all, all of you know that scripture. It, it says that you will eat the good of the land if you're willing and you're obedient or you consent or you yield or you respond to the Lord, you'll eat the good of the land. And so when we're going to eat the good of the land, what does that actually mean? We could use it to talk about prosperity and healing and all those safety and all those wonderful things. But actually when we talk about eating the good of the land, that would be really talking about our inheritance. Yes. So here, here we go with your identification again. Let's identify yourself. We're going to say now what he's really talking about, the eating the good of the land means, for us, it means ruling and reigning. It does. Sure does. My Jesus, yes. That's the fi final stand. Ruling and reigning in this life. Uh, Lynn, can I say a little something here? Sure, you can help me anyway. Maybe you should get a chair. Uh, I'll pull a chair up here. This is fine right here. Right. I, I was just thinking uh, this morning that Brother Hagen told me but he's been preaching, ruling and reigning a long time. He saw it. And people fought him on that more than anything else. Mm -hmm. But they don't fight anymore. Nobody fights anymore. You're not fighting. You're getting up there and ruling and reigning. And it has to do with where we are now. Yes. We've been coming up now. <clears throat> and, and what you're going to share this morning, I know by the Spirit, is for... You on this level. So, Commander, okay, and so if we're willing and obedient, we'll eat the good of the land, or we could say we rule and we reign. So, part of eating the good of the land and ruling and reigning is that God makes you a watchman. That's it right there. He makes you a watchman. Mm -hmm. Now, you are very familiar with this scripture, and I love this scripture. I love the verse pre previous to Isaiah 62 and verse 5. He's talking about his beloved Jerusalem. That's what he's talking about there. And I love how he loves uh, Jerusalem. And what he's saying here is because he loves them so much, he has set a watchman upon their walls. Yes. O oh, Jerusalem, he says, who will never hold their peace. No, nope, not ever, day or night. But put the Lord in remembrance and give him no rest. Now, I think it's very interesting with this scripture. Uh, I'm going to read it to you, this one from the Message Bible. For I have posted on your walls, Jerusalem, day and night. They keep at it, hmm. praying, yes. calling out, reminding God to remember. And they give him <laughs> no peace until he does what he said, until he makes Jerusalem famous as the city of praise. Yes. Wow. So it just never, ever stops. It's just like this, it's almost like a battery ram. They just stay after it. They just stay after it. The, these watchmen, and God actually puts them there. He said, I have set them there. The reason that he sets them there in that position is because the people that he sets there, it's their assignment. And in their assignment, they have persevered. And God is watching, and he sees that they've persevered. He sees that they've stayed with it day and night. Because, you know, if it, you talk about a watchman, what they did was in the Old Testament, you know how they were, they, they would be on the wall of the city. And ba basically they were the protectors. Yes. 
uh, of the city. And so uh, the, these watchmen, uh, they, they would look out to see what was coming. The surveillance, yes. Come on now. The surveillance and to see what was coming. And if there was anything coming, they would announce it. And sometimes they would take care of it themselves. Other times they wouldn't announce it. And then other people, in, if it took up more of an army, they, those other people would go out and take care of it. So the first thing that we see about the watchmen is that they have eyes. Now, this, this morning, where I was in surveillance, was I, I couldn't have gotten there no. unless, God, unless God made me put me there. Yeah. I couldn't have even thought of that man. Right. I don't want to think of him. Yeah. <clears throat> so the first thing that we see about a watchman is that they, they, did, they have eyes. But the spiritual watchmen, they don't just have eyes like was in the natural up on that wall. They had eyes spiritually to see. In other words, they moved by revelation. Right. Or they moved by what God showed. All right. Uh, And they didn't watch just only in a protective way. Because on the walls of those cities... Remember, they were the extension of the king. That is enlightening. They, you, they, just become, they just become an extension of the king. And it, they watch over the building of things because they are up high on the wall. They can look on the outside and they can look on the inside. See, they watch over the progress of things the building of things, uh, they even have these extremely defining moments. Like what we just had was a defining moment in our life where we had to take care of somebody. All right, but in the Old Testament, if you look up uh, Watchmen, uh, there's one that I love so much. He was one of Aaron's sons, and his name was Itamar. And Itamar, his watching was to scale the work. To scale the work. And um, that was kind of what she said was, the sca- was a scaling of the work. She could see even way over there in, what was the name of that place you just, Well, it's Kurd. Name should be Kurdistan. Kurdistan, where the Kurds are. She, she knew that, you see. She was scaling that work to see what was to be done, but because she knew that, then we could jump in with her there and draw that bloodline. Well, I didn't know that. Even though I'm on the project, she knew more about it than I did to to take care of it, all right? So Itamar, he was a watchman over the tabernacle and over that glory, and he was in the tabernacle, and he would watch over it, and to see that everything was done just right. Isn't that interesting? He was a watchman. So first of all, we see that watchmen, they have eyes. They have surveillance. But then that surveillance just doesn't go just to their eyes. It's their ears, too. And uh, so I don't know if you've ever stood up on the border of a nation. I, I haven't many nations, but Israel a lot. I've stood on the border of the nation and, and standing, it's always on the Syrian, it seems like it's on the, not always on the Syrian border, but that's the one I remember because of their surveillance. And if you turn around and look back, you're standing facing Syria, and you could see Syria out there, but if you turned around, you would see this really high mountain. And on that mountain is every kind of thing you could ever, electronic intelligence, all kind of acoustic Uh, listening, satellite sensors, who knows? And now, now, they've added drones. And I don't know, the Lord leads me. I don't watch movies a lot. I mean, I probably think I do since I showed that, but I don't, but the Lord will lead me to some. And the one that he just led me to was something called the eye in the sky. The eye in the sky. And there's a drone in that movie that's this big and it's a bug and this bug goes inside this house to identify some terrorists 
Really? And the bug goes and he lights upon the rafters <laughs> up there. I mean, this is called surveillance. And, and so we can see then how he, de he develops that surveillance. And this guard, I mean, this guy one time that we had in Israel told me, he said, you see where we're standing now on, uh, on the border of Syria? And I said, yes. And he goes, Those, that surveillance up there, that electronic stuff up there, can hear all the way to Damascus. Well, right now, if we went over to, to 2 Kings uh, chapter 6, uh, along there somewhere, we, we would see Elijah there. And, and the Syrian army surrounded the city. And suddenly, he gets this surveillance of what's really there. And his servant is like this, oh, no, they've all surrounded us. They've surrounded us. And so he prays. And he says, Lord, open his eyes and show him. So the, by that surveillance, he sees what's really there. And that would be God's army. Okay, and so the word in, uh, we won't turn to this scripture, but in Psalms chapter 5, the word for watch is the word spy. Huh. Um, and that, that would be the word where, where uh, they, you would have a vision and you would sense the en enemy's movements. So that's what was happening today in that. We were sensing the enemy's movements, and the Lord just wanted to fix that right away over there in the realm of darkness. So you would actually go behind enemy lines. You would uh, detect uh, the devil's movements, and you would cut him off before, before it ever happens. It, this is in this watching. So what we see with this watching is that there are two wills at work. There is the will of man, and then there is the will of God. And those, the divine actually merges with man's desire, and God does his plan. I could tell you so, give you so many examples of this. Uh, my goodness, uh, Jeannie Wilkerson, years ago, Billy was having a meeting in Houston. And they, their uh, brother Howerson and Fern, they had a home in Tulsa. And uh, that night, the she was awakened, and in her heart, she, she saw by the Spirit that this tornadoes were coming, and it was going to try to destroy houses of Christians in Tulsa. And so when Brother Halverson got back home, he, they had a second home there, like I said, and when he got back home, uh, he, he saw that his house, they had no damage or anything in, 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 there in Tulsa. And so the Lord spoke to him and said, well, call Sister Wilkerson. The next door neighbor's roof was gone. Oh, yeah, the next door neighbors, their roof was gone. So you see how close that came. She, and so when he called, she goes, yeah, yep. She said, I, I saw that. She said, I saw that the enemy, she detected it, see, her, in her surveillance. She, she said, I saw the enemy was going to try to come to Tulsa and destroy Christians' homes. But she said, I watched all night. Uh -huh. And she, she said, he didn't get near one of them. This is called the, the ministry uh, of the watchman. Yes. And so <clears throat> now this is the definition of a watchman. To see, to have vision, to keep, to spy, to see after. I like that one. To hedge about, to say, to give voice. Yes. To be lifted high. In observation, like a sentinel. Now, evidently, because of the words of Jesus, we don't see this so much. We see it a few places in the Old Testament. But Jesus, over and over, uh, tells us about this ministry of the watchman, especially in the last days. Yeah. Okay, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 24. Now, here we know, is just as you're turning there, very familiar scripture to these people here in this room. And we know <clears throat> Jesus there is seated on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples are talking to him privately, and they, they're asking him what is the sign of his coming and of the end of the age. So then he begins to tell them all of the signs of his coming and the end of the age. But at the end, close to the end of the chapter, sort of, at the end, verse 42, he gives this strict instruction to them concerning this period of time. Verse 42, watch therefore and give strict attention. Be cautious and active, 
For you do not know in what kind of a day, whether near or remote one, your Lord is coming. But understand this. Had the householder known in what part of the night, whether in the night or the morning, watch the thief was coming, he would have watched and would have not allowed his house to be undermined and broken into. So these watchers are in a position where they watch to keep things from happening. And they watch to make sure the right thing happens. Both sides of the coin. Okay, if we went to Luke chapter 21, just go over there. We'll see it again. Where Jesus again is talking here about the signs of his coming. In verse 36 of Luke 21, 36. Keep watch then and watch at all times. Now that's exactly what they did in the Old Testament. They watched. They, they didn't get days off. No. They didn't get any vacation time. You know, every day they had to log in. Whatever their prayer time was, whatever their period time, they couldn't delete. They, had, they were there watching day and night. Praying that you might have full strength and ability and be accounted worthy uh, to, to escape all these things that will take place and, and to stand in the presence of the Son of Man. I, I wish I could go into that, but we, we won't do that one. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look how many times he is talking about the coming of the Lord Yes. Jesus coming, and this watching. time period, uh -huh. and he talks about watchmen. Yeah. He talks about this surveillance. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5. But as the suitable times and the precise seasons, dates, brethren, you have no necessity for anything being written to you. For you yourselves know perfectly well that the return of the Lord uh, is at hand. Or as a, he's coming as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, verse 4. But you are not given up to the power of darkness for that day to overtake you by surprise like a thief. No. Why? Because you're watching. Mm -hmm. you, you know what's happening. For you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We, not, we don't belong to the night. No, no, no. Or no. to darkness. No, no. According then, let us not sleep as the rest of them do, but let us keep wide awake. Wide awake. And alert, watchful. Awakening. Always in this mode. Yes, yes. Watchful, cautious, and on your guard, and let us be sober and circumspect. I mean, you can, you can have periods of, you know, where you're laying on the floor and laughing and stuff, but <laughs> mainly you're pretty sober. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> you're serious, at least. Yeah. <laughs> There, there is a seriousness about the hour. Okay, yeah. then turn into Ephesians chapter 6. Now, um, my son, uh, one of the pastors on, on our staff, showed me this uh, scripture, and I was amazed by this. That in Ephesians chapter 6, he's talking about the armor of God and putting on the full armor, the whole deal. So when we get down here where it talks about pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, mm -hmm. in the spirit. I never saw that before about two weeks ago, at every season. Every season. So he's expecting you to know about seasons. He's expecting you to know about a shift. He's expecting you to know, okay, this is a new season, and that you'd be praying about it. But the big thing about it is, this is part of our prayer armor. To pray in the spirit is part of your armor. Yes, it is. And you put that on, actually. Okay. In the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty, to the end, to the end, to the end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints. Maybe we're interceding for, for them because we need all of them to get in the boat and to help us watch. Amen. I don't know that, but I just said that. That's but, really good. Yes, praise the Lord. And so uh, he, notice here, he said, in the spirit. In the spirit is a real place. It is. It, it's, a real, it's a real place. More real than this. It's a place where you, you become more conscious of God, oh God, more conscious of the things of God, more conscious of what God is saying, 
than you are anybody around you or your circumstances or what would be on your mind, this fleshly mind. And in the spirit, God starts filling you up with a consciousness mm. of himself. That's, ex that's a good way to put it. In Till you're almost not aware of these things uh, around you. Now, the person I learned the most about that was with, with Brother Halverson. Oh, yes. He was such my a mentor to, to me and to my husband. And we would pray with him a lot. Uh, he was the most amazing person in that it took him no time to step over in the spirit. He, he would start praying. As soon as he was praying, he would be over. Now, <clears throat> uh, Rachel T. Fatilla talked to us about that stepping over thing. You, you would be like, you would be praying along. You might be worshiping. You might be speaking the word, all the things that you would do in prayer. But then suddenly something happens and you like cross over. And but Rachel calling it stepping over the log, that's what, that's what you actually did. And when, when that happens and you're in the spirit, it's the most interesting thing. It's like you, you are not working in prayer. You yourself aren't working in prayer to see what you're going to do next or how, how am I going to do this. You aren't working anymore, but the spirit, it's like he begins to like carry you. It's so divine. Um, and then suddenly God, he like borrows your eyes. And he, he borrows your mouth. Yeah. Blessed ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so I can remember brought, watching Brother Halverson. We would get in these places, and I would always take notebooks with me <laughs> because I noticed that when he stepped over, somehow he could carry me with him. It's true. And so then I, I, would, I would step over with him. Yes. Now, I might not be in the same place he was, but I would be akin to this surveillance most interesting thing would happen to me is I, I would get these perceptions. I would be in this elevation place where I would get these perceptions. I would get answers to things. I would get solutions to problems, even world problems. Me. I, I would get that. And I, I would just be appalled by it. And I would tell Brother Harrelson that. It would be, I tell you what it kind of is like, if I could compare again how it is. It's like the difference between you walking on a flat plane. You'd be walking on a flat plane, and all you can see on the flat plane is what's ahead of you, or you could turn around and you could see what's behind you. But say you were walking up a mountain. You're going up the side of a mountain. As you go up the side of that mountain, as you take steps, up the side of that mountain, you go up in perception and you go up in elevation. And every step that you take that you go up, you get more information about the whole area. This is the way that surveillance is. It's exactly the same way. And uh, you, you cannot, on this plane where you're just walking a straight plane, you, even if you had binoculars, you can't see what you could see up there on top of the mountain. It's exactly the same way in the realm of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And while you're in that place, it's like uh, different things begin to stand out. Like today, I lost all consciousness of you a while ago with this man that we're going after, this Kuswam Suleimani, I, I lost all consciousness of this here. And I was lifted there to be with him. I was in a higher realm. You see, that was called, that's called the, the spirit realm. Now here, here, let's look at another scripture along these lines. This one will help you a lot. Habakkuk speaking in Habakkuk chapter 2. Uh, uh, verse 1. On. Here's kind of how it is. Oh, I know, and I've been rash to talk out plainly this way to God. I will stand 
upon my post of observation. Are y'all there? Back to one. I will stand upon my post of observation and I will station myself on the tower or the fortress and I will watch yes. to see what he will say within me as his mouthpiece. About the perplexities are the complaints against him. So we, we see what happened here. This person is lifted to this elevation, lifted to this place on his abs observation tower. And he's watching there. And so he waits to see what the Lord says for him to do about it. And so as God's mouthpiece, he begins to talk and say whatever God says for him to say. This is basically this right here. This defines it perfect, perfectly. And a lot of times, and I've actually started to do this a lot of times because I learn things about certain battles if I write it down. I write it down just like he said here. Write the vision and engrave it plainly upon tablets that everyone can read it. So probably not everyone in the body of Christ, but maybe those people in this room. Amen? Amen. All right. So this is, this is the way the watchman works. Let's look at this one now in uh, Isaiah chapter 21. Isaiah 21. Brother Howerson put so much emphasis on this, this lifted in this place of surveillance. Yes. All right. I, Isaiah 21, verse 6. For thus says the Lord to me, go set yourself as a watchman. Let him declare what he sees. Whatever you see is what you say. And the watchman cried like a lion, O Lord, I stand continually on the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my station every night. See, day and night. And see, here comes a troop. Now, this is what he sees. This is what he sees. Here comes a troop of men, chariots, horsemen, in pairs. And he, the watchman, tells what it foretells. So the Lord then tells him what, what that actually is. Okay, and then verse 11. The mournful inspired prediction, a burden to be lifted up concerning Edom. Edom would be Egypt. What, isn't that right, Billy? Is Edom Egypt? No. Who is Edom? Saudi Arabia area. Saudi Arabia, okay. One calls well, to, the, one to me. One part of it. One part, of, okay, to Edom. Watchman, what of the night? How far is it spent? How long till morning? Guardian, what of the night? So all these, they're asking the watchman here to tell them what is going on yeah. and what time is it. The watchman said, the morning comes, but also the night. Another time, if Edom earnestly wishes to know, if you will inquire of me, inquire, return, and come again. So he's saying, the watchman is saying, if you're going to be a watchman, you, you come up to this place and you watch, then you keep, require, you keep, keep inquiring of the Lord uh, concerning this because the Lord may show you something else. You see that? Now, um, I remember a really good example of this would have been Reese Howells. Now, he had a Bible school at the, uh, at the Second World War. And his job, he had surveillance and was a watchman over uh, the, the whole Second World War. And yes. really, the reason the Allies won that war was because of his Bible That's school. truth. And they, they, the, they would go out in a, inner surveillance, and they would see what was going to happen. Have you ever read about the Battle of Dunkirk? And, oh, my goodness, the surveillance he had on that. And when he went out before that battle, he knew exactly what was going to happen. And the Lord gave him words to say. Uh, for one of the words the Lord gave him to say, and he's, as he's in that high place of observation, was bend Hitler. Do, do you think that that happened? Yeah. yeah, it did. So you see, words will come just by uh, the Holy Spirit. 
in which God will, will help you to know. All right, now, I want us to go over then to uh, this last scripture here. Uh, this is Zechariah chapter 3. And I, I know you know this, but I keep talking about this scripture because it seems like every time I talk about it, I get a higher... Yes, yes, yes. Something higher seems to happen when I talk about this, but oh, this Jesus. scripture here... Brother Halverson talked to me constantly about this scripture. Yes. And when he would talk to me, it was like this. It, it was went way over my head. I'm like, what? And he, but he still talked to me about it. You know, and sometimes I would do like this, like I understood, but I really didn't get it. So until after he was gone. Well, this situation that is happening here is uh, Joshua is uh, getting ready to be ordained. Not the Joshua that was in the book of Joshua, but another Joshua. He was uh, going to be ordained. And uh, to be, or to ha for there to be an ordination, there had to be a priest that would ordain. And so all the priests were filthy. There was no one to do it. And so we see here that Jesus actually comes. And um, this is what, the, verse 7 is what Brother Halverson always told me about. Now, you know that I want you to notice this here. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it first from the Amplified, but then I'm going to read it how Brother Halverson told me the scripture. Now, I don't know if this is the Brother Halverson translation or what translation he was using, but this is the one he gave me. All right, here we go. Zechariah 3, um, let's read verse 6. And the angel of the Lord... Uh, solemnly and earnestly protested and affirmed to Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways and you will keep my charge, then also, okay, notice what happens, you shall rule my house and have charge of my courts. And I will give you access to my presence and places to walk among these who stand here. Now, here's the way, brother. This is the Brother Halverson trans translation. If you will live the way I tell you, and that's not like live without sin. It's like live in a place, uh, really, of surveillance. And you have to live in that place of surveillance like he tells you to, all right? If you live in the way I tell you and you remain obedient in my service, then, notice, this is what he says, you'll make the decisions around here and oversee my affairs. Has anybody in this room ever had God say, you say, okay, what, uh, you would say to the Lord, what, what do you want me to do about it? And the Lord says back to you, what, whatever you see fit to do about it, do it. Yeah? You'll make the decisions around here and oversee my affairs. And all my attendants, that would be angels, just in case you wondered, around here will be at your service. I, I'm telling you, Brother Halverson, he so worked with Angel, and I love that he. Di I love that he did. He just had an order and a rank. It was like he was a monk. He he was he could just like I don't know how to say it. Just tell him he would just order them around all, all the time. Didn't he, Billy? Yeah, Michael and m many others. But notice here uh, what I want you to see is about keeping your assignment. If you would keep the assignment, then you start to rule his house. Where you are lifted, you go a step further. And there, there are reward. This is your reward for watching things for the Lord, his plans or whatever. And then he says, I'll give you charge of my courts. That means that then that you start working with angels. Yes. And they're very real to you. They're very real. I mean, they're very real in your assignment. They're very real. Um, and then Sister Wilkerson said this through very, a lot of prophecies. Um, 
she said this over and over. The place that we gain uh, rulership is in the earth. And then she, she said always, as, as you work in the earth, you are given more and more position. It's truth. And more and more territory. That's truth. And so you ascend into that territory. There is a gaining of position here. And I think of everything that he wanted me to get, I, I think everything that he wanted me to get out of that, that was you, you keep going and you gain more and more surveillance. You gain more and more. Uh, Jesus already paid the price that we have our authority here. But there is an ascending in that authority and working with God. I hope I said that right. Yes, you do. So, um, with, along the lines of America, um, I saw this last year before the 4th of July. I, I saw the Lord open this door for America. And the Lord said, I've opened a door of restoration for America. Now, I looked up that word restoration and that word restoration means this, a return of something that has been broken or stolen or taken away. Bringing back, so this is what the restoration of America would uh, look like, bringing back to its original condition. I mean, I'm talking about all the way back, all the way back to prayer in schools, all the way back. Now, if you, if you, if you would be an Itamar, th that would be the law for you. That's what you're praying. You're praying that, that it has to go all the way back, not part of the way, but all the way back, okay? Bringing back to its original condition. Listen at this one. Restoring even the evidence of damage. Oh, Father. And enabling it to its full intended purpose. So that would be its full intended purpose would get it over, would get America over into what it was created for before the foundation of the world. Amen. And so that was what the Lord showed me. He showed me the prosperity. He showed me the success. He showed me about taking uh, America all the way back to Bible principles where you can see where we are. We're not near there yet. But, but we're moving. We are moving in a direction. And the Lord gave me this scripture over in Acts, the 19th chapter, with Paul, where Paul is telling about his experience in Ephesus, which when he went there, it, it, was, it was a mess there. There wasn't any Christians there. But do you know by the end, uh, if uh, Ephesus stood on the highest pinnacle of knowledge of all the churches, that's what happened there. But Paul, Paul said this, he was going to remain there in Ephesus, he said, because an effectual door. Yeah. Well, that's, this is the kind of door that yes. it opened yes, for yes, America. Yes, yes. An effectual door is a working door. That yes, means yes, it's a yes, work yes, yes. in progress. So done. then we, this, with this assignment with America, we would have to stay uh -huh. with this assignment of praying for America until we see it back here over in its original condition. Amen, amen, that amen. would mean the, the uh, whole abortion thing would go away. That me would mean prayer is back in schools. Everything where, the, until we get it there, until we get it there, we don't stop. No. That's what we're looking for right there. Uh, a return of something that has been broken. Now, remember in the scripture in Acts 19, I didn't turn over there uh, to where he talks about it in 1 Corinthians. He said, for an effectual door, a working door has opened with me. And when the Lord said this to me, I, didn't, I had no idea what this looked like. With many adversaries. Now... In retrospect of what he said, I see now what he was saying about the adversaries. Yeah, we know about it now, don't we? But it was not the intensity when he said that to me. It was like, oh, adversaries. We had no idea really what that looked like. But now we know what it looks like. And so we have been I, uh, in this assignment in praying for our nation. 
We have been mounting a, 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 an offense against the powers of darkness that have come upon this nation. And this, so we've come around now to where we were, where Billy was talking uh, the first night about coming against the powers of darkness. And actually, we, we, we were doing a pretty good job in this meeting mm -hmm. of doing that. Praise the Lord. Okay, so now we're just going to pray for America, and I don't know how we're going to do that, but I, I want us to get over into surveillance. Praise God. And you remember, you remember, this is not the first time with America something like this has happened. The annihilation of a nation. You remember with Esther. I mean, it was, they were in a critical situation where all of the Jews and Shushan were going to be annihilated. But, so what did she do? So what did she do? She got her a bunch of prayers together. All the Jews got together, and they fasted, and they prayed. And those prayers, actually, by their praying, that beautiful flow of prayer dispensed the anointing on her, a supply upon her of wisdom and of grace that she walked out and it changed the whole thing. So this is what, it's the same thing. We can see that pray, this is what prayers do. So we're ready, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Thank you, Lord. God. <laughs> Slave of Bacando Bay on the Soyo. Answer the answer. Yes, answer Comanado. Alamont over a bash. Remember to pull the Remember to pull the king in with us today. Just in your prayer. Pull President Trump in with us. Amanakota, since he's the first of all. Amanakota, Sarebe, Shoso, Soda. Now, right now, we're not praying and listening to our praying. What we're doing is we're pressing in to step over. We're pressing in. That's all we're looking for. We're not looking about what to pray or how to pray. We're looking to step over. Everybody in this room. Hallelujah. Kambaria for so manana teoyosa ezota. And Zatiki, Alatiko, yeah, Lord, yes, there are keys, there are keys. Nanta, Tudopa, Kelovota, Elasa. And uh, it would help you, instead of watching me, to look at Jesus. Close your eyes. Ayusha Sabako, and Tara de Glividota, and Dazazaga Babodamante, and Dora de Gabo Babotabara, Alekanto Jisabara. Okay, now. Now we're going to go up. We're going to go up and we're going to sing in the spirit. I don't want any instruments just right now. Salamono. Yeah, 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 yeah. Salamono do Koroba. Ala Sakota Baraba. Aza Bogota Remedo. And Zoko, I think they can hear me better with a mic. As Zoko Levidoba, a handheld. Somebody just, if you just read me one. Okay. Barefoot. Barefoot. Ashia, yeah. And an annual no mea soso, Sakalaba so kateme, and the boza, Shasia soso kumane, Alalolo, Lord, we're coming, we're coming now. We're coming, we're coming. Asikomane and I'm marching. Yes, we're marching. Eu sase keto poro, Yuluba, Lelu bando, Kalai, Kukomane, Tepo, Padia, the sun, and Dasi, Udos, Laget, Dokotabate, and Amata. Ah, la Katu Kuburumane, Onoma. Now press into God. Press, press into the Father. Press into Him. As a soul, just to see Him only. Aya Aka, Yada, Yatasa, Yomato, Me Atu Sonoma, Ayu and Nini no Mora, Me Mote, Kasuko, the best to Kalada, Hallelujah, Yalo, Yishina Bees. I see them, yes, Father Hashiko, Yisham, Ben Dombo, Yaman, Dekoloma, pressing in, pressing in, pressing in, pressing over, pressing over, pressing over, stepping over, stepping over. I don't have my. Konda ki kovra seke to rateshlita en to prasito America. O chalika te kovropas. Yes, Lord, your inheritance, your yes. Yandoka me ato seki lobo chishista. 
Yes, unknown to my man to go run back and give me your issue. Hula ba, hula ba, hold the bay and can they cha? And second, I'm going to open and tie you to sell it to the door. Are you sure to say that? Are you sure to say that? Are you sure to say that? You and I, you and I, you and I, so am I your door, but it's a good idea. Ali Bada Uta Hava, Prima Tukishinana, and the Kota Vai, Kota Yishkunai, Kate Viyama. Oh, bless you, Kadu Viyama, and the Kivot, the Pesim, no, no, Asiyoba. Oh, let she cut time in a motorbike, so call her, but she in a mata farita. Oh, Zalele Bomba, Mbake Monda, it's a two so bar. A voluma, you kayo, so kona ma, go to Varabayo. Oh, Zalele Laba, Ukano, to kona, the kano, the kori, but ashigabalash, as a kota bada kota bayo, so sina. Ha ha, as you so father. Yeah, I know, I I know, I know. Ah, so go come at the super is doing so go. Hello to she is sick. Hello, she is she all by to Yamana. And the motor as the go by has to call her. Yes, heaven, 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 yes, I know. Heaven is watching, heaven is watching a motor, the body at the sea and I yo. Hey, you shake it as nobody or to demand to go to be a stone, the and to clade, other days, ma, and to say the poor, my clay, douche, isha, isha, yeah. Yeah, I know. I just know, but I take a bolo and talk all of the yes, the broken, the broken places. I, I yes, Lord, the broken places. The mando, the itos, are healing to the broken places. And you go the entire stiko ma ikostelia to feel, 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 feel. Yes, feel, feel, feel. Mocha na mocha na moto kam and say chait, chait, chait. So no ba you feel? Yes, it's filled. Filled. All the broken places are filled. Are you connecting to the red dishes helping? Yes, there are those that are helping. Angels, yes. Angels, the angels, yes. A Michael Lebe and Dora and Sia. Are you filled? Fill the places. Fill the places. The mondo kugema no no and no matu kusola ba astike am and the. Apostolic, a, a code rende, a code, a, a, a code, um, and there's a coding, a, and there's a coding, and there is one. Yes, I know, I know. Oh, to be so by you, oh, the way you did that, Lord. I, 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 I know, I know, I know. And you should go, Marco, Rado, Rado, Ranenoka. I you should can name Mono Nomana. As a Koka by you should can I, you to the soul. About your soaring, there is a soaring now. Yeah, you go, nobody. Oh, but you so, but you so, but you so, run here. Now, more, you're more no, the sea, go, go, no, by. And no, can you see the radical of it? Motso, Motso, go, but Motso, go, no, man, you do it. There you do the sign, and do the sign, I your sign, sign. Aid and assistance, aid and assistance, assistance there, assistance there, assistance by your spirit, oh God, in a mortal remain. And you open that place, open the place, open the place for him, open the place. He's walking through, he's walking through now. I know he's walking through. I see him walking through. I know Arigail, you share his eyes, 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 eyes. eyes. Yes, he has eyes. He has eyes to see it. And, and uh, 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 no, I know, I know. Yes, yes. Uh, it is now. It, it is now. It, it is now. Operacado bostola bokoke deyu tujurantai. Yeah, and anoint, and anoint, and anoint, and anointing, and anointing. Amashu komashu osi. Edu arandu koshe edisha. Yeah, yeah, and don't go she will bore him. You bore him on eagle's wings, on eagle's wings. Once again, once again, higher, higher, it is going higher now, it's going higher. Um, oh, we are going higher. I you, you higher, I know higher. Rajo, 
Yes, yes, eyes, the eyes, go, go, yes, 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 go, 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 Lynn, I just saw in the spirit, I just was heard from God uh, that just as there were in the Bible, you see that there were evil spirits who were stationed over nations. Uh, he has angels stationed over yeah. nations. And, we place them there. And, and the same angels who accompanied, this is what I heard when I was down there, the same angels who accompanied the pilgrims are still here. They are still the same ones. They are stationed at their post. They are faithful. They never left. And they're experienced. They're experienced in working with everything about America all the way. And they're experienced to work with us now. In the Come on. Come on then. All of you. All of you. We summon all of you. All of you to work now. Yay. And don't go on a master double. We summon you now for now. the work of America. Now, now, Angel. now. Angel. 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 Republic. Now. Awakening now. now. Awakening now. 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 For help. For help in that realm. Shebra. All of you. And a month on the last And now with your horses and chariots. And all of you. About a quota of your souls. You descend. And you draw us up with you. And you draw up with you. And a door and they cause us. Yes. And there's one, there's one with the flag. <laughs> and the preservation of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, faithful. I Angels of light prevail. Yes, prevail. Yes, prevail over the darkness, angels of light. You prevail. You prevail. Yeah, what we do, we do now. We summon, we summon all of them, all of them, all of them from that realm. Come now, come. Entrance and no matter assistance there in the realm of the spirit assistance, assistance, ministry of your spirit. Yes, you come. I shall cut over your top body and not to hold the ladder. 
Out and out. You who stand by. You who stand by. Yes. 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 The sword, the sword, is the spirit, the sword of the spirit, the sword of the and spirit the prevails. The yes, in the, the, the word of the Lord, prevails. and the word of the Lord came the unto me, saying, "Ando babaroto, what, 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 Lord, what, 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 what did he what? say? What did he, what did he say? say to? What did he say? Yes, this is the realm, this is the place of operation." This is the place of surveillance. This is the place. This is the plan. Oh. I said, stay in the realm of the spirit and behold the things that are to come and the things that are past, that they have gone away. They have diminished. They have decayed. They are past. Don't waste your time on those. But move forward moving forward all yes everyone is moving forward everyone has come into a graduation everyone has come into a new place of identification I see me now I know me now I know me now I see me now up now up 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sorry, Sistina. Thank you, Lord. Not now, right? Not right now, please. Hold it if you can.
Carrie Carmichael, do you have something to share? You want to come here? You want us to give you a microphone? They have one, I think. Here she comes. Very breath. My. This oh my. of him who has to do with the nation. Sometimes prayer is just breathing in this place. In May 2016, I asked the Lord about Donald Trump. Partially because I'm a McLeod from the Isle of Lewis. Oh my. And his mother was a McLeod from the Isle of Lewis. Something about those islands. Yes, it's truth. Something about those islands. And I said, Lord, not in jest, but half interest. I said, Lord, what about this Donald Trump and this campaign? And he spoke to me immediately and he said, I have set him up to be a disruptive politician, to disrupt, disrupt the structures that have risen up in the United States of America. And I will use him as a shaking to the peoples of the land. He will shake everything that can be shaken during the time he's in office. He doesn't know it necessarily, but I'm using him. And like a disruptive technology that I have released into the minds of men in the earth that you're seeing today, technologies that in a moment of time turn the tables on everything. And that's what the Lord said to me, the words he used. He will turn the tables on everything in the land. And we are beginning to see everything shaking. The people groups are shaking. The states are shaking. Hollywood is shaking. The powers, the powers are shaking. Oh, God. They're shaking. 
Congress, Senate, don't know what to do. Destabilizing. People thinking, what's going on? Children in universities running around like fools. Crazy ideas. Seeming madness. <laughs> but guess what else is happening? What else is shaking? Oh, there's a trembling. There's a trembling. Imagine in the moment that those angels began to roll that stone away from that grave. There was a trembling in every dimension of the creation of the Most High God. For what was about to be revealed was the Son of the Living God, the Most High. The name. Who are you in this room? Who are you in this place? Who are you on the internet listening? but ones born from above, of the Son of the living God. In this season, I am revealing to my people, my children, my DNA. It's coming up through your DNA. It's genetic within us in the spirit, who we are, in whom we live and what we have in this place. But you must believe it. I will make you know it. It's already in your knower. And as everything in the nation is shaking and trembling, crumbling in structures of society and man, there is coming in the body of Christ. It's resident within your DNA, but it's being released from the very throne of God on which you sit. It's being released moment by moment, thought by thought, song by song. Revelation by revelation, the reality of who we are. It's not in your behavior. It's not in your Bible studying. It's not in your praying. Those are all parts. But the reality is being one in him, the new man. And when America, Canada, all the nations of the world begin to see the resurrection, life in the body of the Lord Jesus, in the highways and the byways, we've been trying for many decades to be something that we heard and thought. But now is the day when we are who he says we are. We are the living, breathing expression of the very image of God himself. In whatever way you were uniquely designed to be that. And in this nation, as you rise in the knowledge of him, Amen. his presence will attend 
that knowledge. And the people will do what they did in that little village of Stornoway on the Isle of Lewis so many times. They will run from their places of amusements, as they used to say in that day, and fall at the feet of those who bear the good news and reflect the very presence of him. This is the day we're living in. This is the day we're living in. The glory has come. Amen. The glory is within. The glory is without. The glory is all around. The glorification of the body of the Lord Jesus. So your nation will experience this. And it will go around the world like nothing we have ever seen before, saith the Spirit of grace. Thanks be to God. Let us whisper a thanksgiving to the Lord for this word. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you and praise you. We praise you and thank you. We thank you, Father recognize this as a word from you from the throne to your own we thank you we treasure it we honor it we receive it thank you thank you my lord Thank you, dearest Father. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Praise him. I, our sister is a woman of long time walking in the spirit and prayer. She is a citizen of heaven like you and I but she has been assigned to live in Canada where she serves there. Lord, we thank you. She spoke of the moving on the Isle of Lewis. And in my book, First of All and the Awakenings, the first awakening that he told me to write about was that awakening that lasted from the early 1800s into the 1950s and so on in the Isle of Lewis and to cover what it was like where Donald Trump's mother grew up and how it affected her. And it's in that book and quite a coverage of other books so amazing. I I will in one of the times that I speak we will it will be about that and the awakening. I think that will be Sunday. I know he wants us to pray in an awakening. I'm not sure about tomorrow's service. Will everyone be ready here? You here? You here? Be ready. We're, he has much to say to us. Some he said to me just then, and I'll share it later. I want to share something with you now that came in 
uh, earlier. Um, this came from, I don't know if you didn't know Denise Shaw or not, she's a minister. And this she texted about 1144. Just got a text from our missionary friend in Kurdistan, Becky and Grady Pickett. They have a church in Erbil. The fight is now 40 miles away from them. They are evacuating their six children to their home in the mountains. She said, stand against and help guard our gates. And this was at the exact time she sent this message, at the exact time that you were led to deal with that man. He's, he's probably, is that Elon? Yeah. He's probably behind it. That's, they're the ones fighting, this uh, revolutionary mm. guard. So that's how it is when you are in the spirit you know things that are happening around the world. And before we got the message of her from her, she was probably receiving that message at exactly the same time you were dealing with this man and the Revolutionary Guard. And so let us now just lift up these, this couple. What, what is their name again? Uh -huh. their, name. their names are Becky and Grady Pickett. They pastor a church in Erbil. The fight is now uh, 50, uh, 40 miles at that time, exactly when you prayed, 40 miles away from them. They are evacuating their six children to their home in the mountains. She said, quote, stand against and help guard our gates. That would be the border, I believe, of Kurdistan, the enlarged Kurdistan that God wants. So I really think, you know, that we've already prayed about this. But uh, let's lift them up by name. So in a situation like this, where I would get a testimony of something that I prayed, and I thought I got it through, I would watch to see if anything else would come to me. <coughs> Excuse me. About that. Where it doesn't have to be at this moment, but you're still in a watchful mode. You remember what we said there about this being day and night? It says... I would love you to get a break, but heaven is close, and we're all going there, and we'll get a break there, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case we miss something in our humanity, let's just lift up this couple right now. The Becky and Grady Pickett. The pickets right now. We lift them to you, Father, Father. right now. We and thank six you, children. And those six children, Give you hide them hide in the them, secret Father. place of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty. And we put the blood of Jesus all around them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Strengthen them in the day of battle. And we thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You can hover over this family. Yes. In the spirit, you can hover. Yes. You could be the, the drone, the hovercraft. Yes. Yes, over them. Over them. I have no doubt the Lord will use some of you in that very way mm -hmm. to hover over them, to keep a hover. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How amazing and wondrous how he led us this morning. But see, that was, <clears throat> that was the mystery in that presence. That's why it's so when important. When you took time to go there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whenever it comes, I know, don't you move until you get a leading. Because it is a leading. And he led us right to the spot. Right to the spot. Who would have thought? If somebody told me I was going to 
whatever the name of that place is. I can't Erbil. even see. Erbil. 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 Where did you go today? I went to Erbil. Thank you, Jesus. He knows how to get us there. We know how to get there. There was so much in that word from the Lord, and with Carrie's permission, I'm going to ask that it be typed up and maybe put online, if you don't mind. We shall do that later. And we shall have one of the times when we pray for the awakening that's going to get things done. Yeah. We wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you so much for coming, bringing your supply of the Spirit. We do have the pastors and uh, ushers and greeters and helpers luncheon over at Gary McSpadden's church, and I'll come over there for a while with you. What, honey? Faith and, Faith and Wisdom Church, if you want to put it in your GPS. It's the old Roy Rogers Theater. Huh? There's only five seats left. Bless the Lord. You are dismissed. We'll see you tonight. What a day we had. I like